Normally with opera, a designer is hired a few years in advance because they give you um, a couple of years to design it and also for the shop to do all the plans about how it's going to get made and where it will be made and how it, it all gets accomplished. So once I'm hired, I obviously listen to the, the score of the opera. I'll buy record, different recordings of it so I can kind of work my way into the, you know, the feel that I want for it. And then I often will, uh, besides reading the libretto, which is the script of an opera, I like to look online if I can find other productions of an opera. And I did that with Traviata. It just, it helps me, even though we'll be doing different things with our Traviata, it helps me kind of get into the way the rhythm of the scenes work and, and how one scene works into another one and how the singers, the performers behave in the opera, which you, it's, sometimes it's hard to get just from recording or from reading a libretto. When we began working on the project, Francesca asked us to look at some later periods than the opera is normally set, which is usually in the 1840s or 1850s. And I think she wanted to make it in something a little bit more contemporary. Where we eventually settled was 1900, and those dresses tend to be a little bit sleeker and a little bit sexier and a little bit more, a little just prettier. So we zeroed in kind of on 1900 Paris, which is a beautiful period because it's what's called the Belle Epoque part of history. And the dresses are very much of a kind of an hourglass shape, very, very fitted bodices, a lot of cleavage, a lot of bare arms, bare shoulders, and, um, and then a very, very fitted waist, which we accomplished with the corset, and then very full skirts that are slim at the hips and then get wide as they go down the, the legs. Um, and they have a wonderful flair to them that give some lovely movement when ladies are walking around or when they're dancing. So once we chose that period, I looked at a lot of artists from that time, uh, like John Singer Sargent and James Tissot uh, were, were two that I used a lot for reference, and chose some of their paintings as specific references. And actually, the first thing that Francesca said to me was that she wanted Violetta's first costume to be based on Sargent's portrait of Madame X, which is a little bit earlier. It's actually the late 1880s, but I kind of modified it a bit so that it would fit into this slightly later period of 1900. And then the next thing to do was to differentiate between the two big scenes in the opera, the two big parties. This is the gown that Violetta wears in the first party scene, and it's made out of a, um, a, um, a very rich um, silk satin, kind of an aubergine color. And she's very, as you can see, very untrimmed, very sleek and simple. And then these are the, uh, some of the ladies who are in the same scene with her. These are some of their dresses in, the, in those pale kind of um, uh, rather sad kind of uh, pastels. And you can see how much more trimming there is on, um, on their dresses. I think our thought is that she would be dressed a little bit ahead of her time historically. It gives you that feeling that she's 10 steps ahead of fashion. This is Violetta's gown for Flora's party where all the other ladies are dressed in these very violent and bright colors, these reds and fuchsias and hot pinks and she is in a very austere black that's kind of picked up by all this kind of silver and gold and black jet beading on it. And she wears it with this headpiece that's um, these um, egret and ostrich plumes that kind of just finish off the costume with, again with very little fuss. Well, the great fun of designing costumes, especially when they're in a beautiful period like this, is just really creating a whole world for the audience to see. It's really a way of storytelling that is in addition to the score and the script and libretto and the performances. You kind of see this world that is being established through the costumes and through the set, through just all the visuals. So it's, you really feel like you're contributing a lot to the story.